Hi, I'm Shira Goodman from Ceasefire PA, and I'm here with our senior senator from Pennsylvania, Senator Bob Casey. Thank you for having me. Sure, good to be with you. Thank you. So we're here in D.C., and we're just about an hour away from some votes in the Senate tonight. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to our supporters what's happening tonight? Yeah, basically we'll have four votes tonight on two issues. There will be a, a, a Democratic and Republican uh, bill on each side on each issue. Um, I don't know the exact order yet, but uh, we'll have a vote. Uh, finally, another vote on the background check issue. Uh, our bill is better than the Republican bill, uh, for sure. It will, for example, which the Republican bill does not do, uh, shut down the gun show loophole. So it's a much broader and stronger background check uh, bill than the Republican version. I hope, I hope that we'll get some Republicans to vote our way and to get enough to pass it. I know that's one of the things our folks care about the most. They've been, I think, calling you, calling Senator yeah. Jimmy. Um, so we're really hoping it can happen tonight, but background checks would make a huge difference. It would, it, without a doubt. Now, um, the likelihood of it passing, I think, is a lot less than, than, than likely. Um, but that's one vote. The other vote will be, I think, for the Senate, kind of a new, a new uh, issue in this sense. It's not, not simply that we've spent a lot of time over a long period of time asking the basic question, if someone is too dangerous to get on an airplane because we think they're a terrorist, why would we ever give them a gun or allow them to have a gun? And that's, that, that basic uh, uh, outrage is, is still there. But, but so Diane Feinstein has a bill that, that speaks to that, but her, her bill also speaks to the problem we had in Orlando, where you had someone uh, with whom the FBI had engaged, had questioned, I think more than once and had some concerns about it, but none of the evidence or none of the engagement rose to the level of, of probable cause meaning you could arrest them. But what if the FBI or the Justice Department or federal law enforcement or any law enforcement has a reasonable suspicion that someone is a, ter is a terrorist, number one, and number two, would use a gun in a terrorist act. Now there's no exactitude, there's no, it's not exact or, or precise, but from all the totality of circumstances, is there enough evidence to, to, to be concerned that the, the person is a, uh, a suspected terrorist or even a known terrorist and trying to prevent them from getting a gun, whether in the context of getting on a plane or otherwise, including the, the, the horror of, of Orlando, that circumstance. So those are the two basic issues, background checks and then what, what, we're, you know, what folks of shorthand call uh, plugging the terror gap. So you said that they might not pass, and that's because they have to meet that 60 vote threshold right. in the Senate right. to then get to meet 51, which right. they probably could meet. Right, to get over that first hurdle. Right. That first hurdle. So, what, you know, three years ago, three and a half years ago, you may have been on a different side of this issue before Sandy Hook. Can you just tell our, our folks a little bit about why you've come out where you are today? It was Sandy Hook. What happened in that school and in that town um, changed the way I looked these issues, uh, the basic issue and then the related issues, uh, forever. Uh, because I had asked myself, not just, you're asking yourself questions, as I was that, that horrible weekend in December of 2012, but not just asking where do you fall on this issue, what, what are you going to do about it, but how are you going to vote? Because I knew there would be votes and there were a couple months later. And it was, it was an up or down. You either support an effort to to, to stop a lot of this violence, or you support an effort which is basically enforce the existing laws. Um, and I just thought in the context of what uh, we saw in Newtown, um, that, that that was no longer a tenable position. And since that time, I've thought to myself, why, when, when we have, we know in 2014, 33,636 people died by gun violence, why in the face of that, that number would you, you say, well, there's nothing really we can do except enforce existing laws and gun violence is gonna be part of American life for many years and there's not much more we can do except really enforce the law. Uh, that makes no sense to me. It makes even less sense when you, when you run through the prism of what we did after 9-11. There we lost 3,000 Americans and, and we said, at least we're never gonna permit an airplane uh, ever to go into a building and kill thousands of people or several airplanes. We're going to stop that from happening, and we did. We stopped that. Now, we didn't, we didn't stop all terrorism. We didn't uh, uh, 
change every circumstance, but we at least came together as Americans and said, we are going to stop that problem. We should have the same degree of intensity and focus on gun violence. And it doesn't mean if we take every, and I think we need to pass a long list of bills, not two or three, it's four, probably more like seven or eight or nine, mm -hmm. just to begin to get this right. And even when we pass the laws, we'll have to do a really good job of making sure they work. So th this is a project that could take many, many years, even when you pass the law. But we've got to start, we've got to begin. Instead of surrendering to the idea that we have to live with the idea that more than 33,600 people are going to die every year, that's just unacceptable. Well, we're really glad we have you on our side. As a last question, um, people are going to be watching tonight. They may right. be happy with the vote. They may be upset. What's your message for Pennsylvanians who want to see what you said, who want to see this package of bills, right. who want to keep working on this, who want to keep fighting? What, what would you have them do? At least two things, maybe three. The first thing is don't underestimate what you have achieved, meaning folks around Pennsylvania, around the country, who, who are saying to us, take action after Orlando. Uh, do something. Uh, to, to move the ball down the field. Now, in this case, a lot of effort led by Chris Murphy and Cory Booker and Dick Blumenthal, but especially Chris, because he was on the feet for 15 hours in the filibuster. The, another 37 or so of us helped them along. I spoke three times, but I didn't have to do my feet 15 hours, so I had a, an easier assignment. But that whole effort, basically by about 40 Democratic senators, got a result, a very tangible, specific result. Not nearly enough, because scheduling four votes uh, is not enough. We've got to keep going. But absent that effort by our side, there would be no votes, in my judgment. Now, I can't prove that, but I'm fairly certain that the ma Republican majority would just move on to an appropriations bill and say, well, it's uh, it's terrible what happened in Orlando. We express our condolences. Awesome, correct. We've got to move on. Right. But so it just goes to show you that you've got to put a lot of effort in just to get votes scheduled. So that's number one. Keep going. Keep pushing all of us in both parties. Number two is. Don't ever uh, underestimate uh, the power that, that people have today to speak directly to United States senators about something of this, of this importance, this gravity, uh, by way of uh, emails and calls and social media uh, and, and all, so many other ways that, that folks can, can, uh, can get their point across. So I would just say to folks out there, keep doing what you have been doing, and if anything, do more of it because you're getting the attention of people in both parties. And I know some people will say, oh my goodness, all this work and all they got were a couple of votes scheduled. Well, we gotta keep doing that. We've gotta make sure that, that week after week, month after month, we're figuring out a way, even if there's not a vote, to keep this in front of the American people and to have the same sense of determination and urgency as we had after 9-11. And I think some of that intensity has picked up uh, significantly and uh, we're gonna keep fighting. Great. Well, we'll be with you. Thank you so much. We're so proud of you and really glad to have you on our side. Sure. So Thank thanks. you. Thanks for your work. Thank you.